Today we're going to look at uh, doing a belt replacement on a Sanyo Plus Series D45 cassette deck. I've had this cassette deck for quite some time and uh, basically it does work. If you click play you can see here that it is playing and music comes out. I, I have it muted because there's music on here and if YouTube detects the music it's going to give me a copyright violation. Um, but play works. Uh, stop works. Rewind, you can kind of see it's pretty stuck. It's not really um, able to rewind. Fast forward mostly works. If there's a little bit of tape on the front reel, it works really well. Um, if there's a lot of tape here as I switch sides, it still works. It just kind of starts slow and seems like it's straining a bit. I'm presuming that the problem is the belts. So I'm going to go ahead and replace those and see if that fixes the problem. Uh, I was able to order the belts online um, from a place and they sent me this. Um, hopefully these are the right size and will work. And uh, let's go ahead and begin the repair. As with any repair, the first thing I do is make sure it's uh, unplugged so that there's no power in the system. The Sanyo deck is actually pretty easy to take apart. There's two screws on this side and two screws on the other side. And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, take that apart. So these, these are the belts they sent me. Um, none of them are this thick, so I'm a little a little suspicious, but what I'm going to do, because I don't want confused, I'm going to mark each one of these new belts with one little tiny line of silver with this silver pen that I've got. That way I'll know which ones were new and which ones are original. So basically I put a little mark on each one of these new belts that has a little silver there that identifies it on the outside. That way when I check the sizes to make sure everything matches um, I'll know which are new and which are old. Okay, so it looks like uh, to uh, change the belts, they're all carefully behind each other, which is always a challenge. But let's go ahead and take this piece off here, and uh, that should give us access to the belts. Well, that came out easy. Oh, that's interesting too. There's a, there's that piece too. All right. Well, actually, that doesn't look bad at all. You certainly can get these two off very, very easily. So getting these um, first two off, pretty easy, right? Just take that off. That actually doesn't feel bad at all. And then this one, that's good too. That actually feels totally um, in good shape. Both of those belts seem decent. And if we go over here, we can take a look and see these are the originals. So that's not the right one. Um, maybe that's the replacement for that one, I'm guessing. And then that's probably the replacement for that one. Probably these have stretched out a bit because the other two these two here is like, well, that's not going to work, and that's too big. And then this, this is thicker, so that's not going to work. Versus that, uh, the thicker one over here, um, which I'm tempted just to leave. I don't really like this one is so much thinner. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and take it out and compare, and at least take a photo, and maybe send an email to the place I bought these belts saying, hey, this doesn't look like the same size, right? Because it doesn't look the same size to me. This one's a little harder because uh, you got to take it out two places. But yeah, it does come out. And uh, then comparing it, you can kind of see this is the original and then this is the new. Uh, it kind of fits, but boy, the, the width is completely different if we were to really take a look at that. You can see the width does not match up. This is maybe closer to quarter an inch. That's more of an eighth inch. Not sure about that. 
So given none of these belts were really that bad, it's going to be an interesting thing to see whether or not um, replacing these is going to fix the rewind. Oh, I do see the other belt. There is one more belt way in the back here. If you look carefully, there, right there in the back. That one's going to be interesting to get that out. That must be the fourth one that I've got over here. So let's go ahead and get that out. Um, I'm going to go ahead and see how involved that's going to be. That is probably the one that's... Oh, that's for the uh, tape counter, actually. Yeah, because the tape counter is in the front here. You know, I don't care about that. Tape counter works fine. I'm not going to go ahead and stress over that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the belts on. They're going to go in in backwards order. So the capstan belt first, even though it's thinner, I'm going to go ahead and uh, use it, see how it works. And uh, it's a little tricky. you got to kind of loop it around. Uh, I tried with the screwdriver. It didn't work too well, but this way worked really well. I was able to get it on the, the small little motor uh, pulley. And uh, from there, I'm able to then get it onto the uh, um, capstan drive. Um, not too hard. You can see here how I did it. Really not very difficult. And we give it a little bit of a test here. Um, it does spin. I notice it's kind of riding right on the edge. Um, I didn't like that too much, so what I decided to do was kind of try to coerce the uh, the belt to be in the middle of the pulley on the motor, which would also put it toward the middle of the capstan, the big, big round item right there. And I found that, um, yes, if I, if I turned it enough, it actually um, started centering. Um, somehow the way they, they made the, the pulley, the belt kind of self-centers to be in the middle, which um, is a very good design. Not sure exactly how they did that, um, but I think because the pulley has is a little curved in the, the top of it where um, it's curved. But you'll see here in a second that uh, the belt gets more centered. Yeah, there we go. You can, if you look carefully, you can see that it's now pretty much in the center of the pulley um, as opposed to onto the one side. There we go. That's a better shot. And it stays. I'm not doing anything. It's just staying there all by itself. Now I'm going to put on the remaining two belts. Again, reverse order. So we're going to do the one that's kind of on the left first because uh, that one's behind the, the final one that's going to come here. Also being very careful to make sure that the belt is straight. There's not any twists in it or anything like that, because I think it's going to run better. And then I'm going to go ahead and do this final belt. These are very easy because it's right there, and you can get to everything uh, without any difficulty. Here I'm going to reattach that final metal triangular shaped plate that I took off originally in order to get to the belts. Here I'm going ahead and reassembling the case and we'll give it a try. Okay, so now we'll see how it works. Go ahead and press play. And we can see that it works fine in play mode. And then we're gonna go ahead and fast forward. And then we're gonna try the rewind. Hey, and the rewind works. It was the belts. Now, one thing I really liked about this cassette deck was the fact that it automatically clicks off the buttons when the tape ends as well. That was one of the reasons I got it actually when I first bought it. Um, anyhow, I would say that's a thumbs up. 
this uh, the belt replacement made the rewind work and everything else is working I have tried it with the audio and uh, it sounds great and uh, that's it um, thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe